Hello and welcome to part two of Tables and XY Data. This lab is brought to you in part from Geodatabases XY Data and an introduction to raster data. Let's get started. One of the biggest demands of a practitioner of GIS is the ability to use spreadsheet data in your analysis and subsequently on a map. Spreadsheets are industry standards for working with data collection and data management. In this step, we will illustrate how, it is, how simple it is to import spreadsheet data into a GIS system. You will be taking the XY data, in this case latitude and longitude, from the Orlando area theme parks and placing it on a map. The same operation can be done with XY data from your phone, think about geolocation of your photos, or from your handheld GPS unit if you're out in the field. In your existing map document, with all of your vector files from the previous step included, click Save As and rename the map theme parks underscore your initial. So file, save as. You're going to want to navigate to your drive where you're saving all of your, your files. So for me, it's in my MOOC folder, week three. I'm going to title this theme parks underscore KLL for my initials. You'll want to change and add your initials to that. Do save. Now you want to click the add data button which can be found right here and we're going to add the table of Disney parks seen here. Click add and then we will right click on that new table and click open. Well here we have we can expand so we can see a little bit more. We have a whole host of information. There are six records, the name of the Disney parks, address, phone numbers, type that's amusement parks, uh, latitude and longitude. This right here is going to be essential in the operation we're about to perform. Uh, where the source data came from, so Google and when it was last updated. So some in 2011 and others in 2008. So we'll go ahead and close this table. Then we're going to right click on the file in the table of contents and click display XY data. All right, so then this window is going to pop up. We have to populate the X field, the Y field, the Z field if needed. We're going to leave the X field as longitude DD so that one was preset for us. The Y field, we need to click here for the drop down and change it to lat DD. So for your latitude, we're going to leave the Z field as none. For the coordinate system of input coordinate, click edit here. Then we're going to click geographic coordinate systems. We're going to scroll all the way down to world, expand, scroll down to WGS 1984. Click that. You'll learn more about coordinate systems in the following weeks. But for now, let's just go with WGS 1984. That's a standard latitude and longitude uh, friendly coordinate system. Click OK. All right, everything looks good. We'll click OK again. And it's a little hard to see, but down here in the bottom corner, let's turn off our cities and major roads. <gasps> there they are. Oh, excuse me. Let's change the symbology to maybe red. There they are. Let's use our zoom tool. Highlight the area. If we click on this and right click and we do our open attribute table. We can see it essentially looks like the exact same table that we saw before when we right clicked on Disney Parks. However, these files have actually been located on the map based on their latitude and longitude. So we've taken it and we've referenced that spatial data. All right, so your next step, we're going to need to turn, you see here that this is listed as an event file. Well, an event file is not a permanent file. So we're going to need to export these events into our geodatabase. So we're going to right click, scroll down to data, then choose export data, export all features. We're going to click our folder here. We're going to change the save type as into uh, file and personal geodatabase. We're going to double click on Orlando data and we're going to stick it in here with these other vector files that are already in your map. 
So we're going to call this Parks and then hit Save. All right, so you can see here that it's orlandodata.mdb. should be the same as on your computer. The original path will be different depending on the location that you're saving your data. Click OK and click Yes. We can remove our events file. You can remove the table if you'd like. It doesn't really, since it's not showing up on the map, it doesn't really matter. All right, so there's a couple of questions here that you'll want to answer in your process summary document, which, which park is located furthest to the north, and then the next question is to describe an instance in which XY data would be useful to you. So have you created your own XY data in the past? If not, how might this data be useful to you in the future? Think about that. Really no right or wrong answer, but just think how you might be able to use XY data outside of theme parks or in your everyday life, whether it's an environmental impact or fun for your vacation. There's also a little note about where's my metadata. The XY data generated for this table was obtained from the Florida Geographic Data Library, or FGDL. You can click on the link located in your lab, and then you can also find the full metadata here. When I created this lab, I pulled a subset of the theme parks in Orange County for this exercise, just to make things easier, because as most of you know, Orlando, Florida is the land of theme parks, and I felt like the ones that were in this cluster were probably the most well-known. Before I leave, let's finish part two with some familiar tasks. Symbolize and label the theme parks layer using your Own Your Map guidelines. To start, you'll want to right-click on Parks and scroll down to Properties. We're going to click on Symbology tab if it's not already selected. Then we're going to click Categories, Unique Values, it's already highlighted. We're going to change the value field name to name. From this drop down, you can see all the different headings that we previously saw in the attribute table. So again, we'll click name, and then we're going to click add all values. You can go ahead and you'll want to unclick all other values, which is really not important here because we are displaying all the values. This would be useful if you were only going to label or only wanted to show a subset. So say, we had all the theme parks in Orlando, and we only wanted to show the ones that were related to Disney, not, let's say, Universal or maybe a go-kart track, if they were calling that, had that listed as a theme park. Okay, so we can uncheck that. Then we're going to want to click on Name, and let's change this to something more meaningful, like Orlando Area Theme Parks. With that selected, let's right-click on Heading, and choose properties for selected symbols. Scroll down, there's so many symbols here, so really go with what speaks to you. I think in the lab we used asterisk. Let's bump up the size a little bit, click OK. And you can see that by clicking on heading, all of the features below were selected. Well, I'd like to have a different color scheme so that they can easily be spotted from looking at a legend. We could use this, and you can see that that automatically changed. You can do from green to red, from different shades of red, from an orange to blue. Let's do that. I like the vibrant colors. There's also something I'll show you here that may make things a little bit easier. You can right click on your color ramp, uncheck graphic view. It will give you the actual uh, names. You can do a list of cyans, which are shades of blue, green blues, for me, I would prefer to see the color, so I'm going to switch back on to graphic view, but that's just a little tip and trick that you may want to think about. I have this all the way that I like it, so I'm going to click apply. Clicking apply will keep you in this window. If you click OK, then you're going to exit out back into your map. You can see the blue, well that's going to be Typhoon Lagoon, the Magic Kingdom, Blizzard Beach in yellow. These colors here I find to be a little bit hard to distinguish. As a quick review, let's just turn on labels for these parks. We can. You can double click on parks. Oh, you can also see that it's in table view here. So it's listing where this file is located. And you can change your different layout views here. So list by visibility, list by source. I prefer to list just like this. It makes things a little easier sometimes. But like I said, it's all the same information, just presented differently. I'm going to right click on parks, scroll down to properties, and I'm going to select the labels tab. I'm going to label features in this layer. I'm going to label them all the same way. Yes, I want to use the name. Let's select symbol. 
I have some save symbols here that are ones that I commonly like to use. You can choose whatever you'd like. There are so many here. Highways, we use those in the On Your Map. Let's see, I'll show you how to do a halo because those are pretty, be good to use later on. Let's, let's just choose country. I don't particularly care for the Times New Roman on maps. So let's do Century Gothic. That has a nice look to it. Let's go into Edit Symbol. Now, Halo, when I refer to that, that means that it's gonna give this, if you think about having your label on a map, it tends to blend in with the background. Well, if you click Mask, choose Halo, aha, you can see that it kind of gives a little white buffer, almost lifts it off the page. I find two to be a little much, so sometimes I'll go down to one. And then you can see that it's been added right here. I'm actually not totally sold on the Century Gothic here. So let's do, um, let's try this one. You, there's no right or wrong, you pick what you like. I don't have to bold right now, we'll see, we'll see how it looks. There's no duplicate labels because we only had six records. So let's just leave all this as it is. Click OK. Ah, well, there is some issue with the label overlapping on the symbols. And we want to take care of that. So let's go back to here and let's do placement properties. Change location, this is going to give you like a, a matrix here. One is the most important and then all the others are allowed, two being the next best and then three being your lowest priority. All right, let's try conflict definition. This one may be a little bit easier. So here we have a label weight, which is high. So that means that the actual text of the label, so Disney's Animal Kingdom is giving more priority than the actual symbol itself. So we're gonna change this to high as well and let's see what happens. Click apply, click okay. There we go. You can see that some of these were shifted a little bit more over. That's gonna conclude tutorial on how to add XY data and then also how to play around with symbology and labeling. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson.